afternoon. We begin this Friday with breaking news on Mount St. Helens. Rescue crews are searching for an outdoor program employee who went missing near the Marble Mountain Snow Park yesterday. For more on what's going on with the rescue effort, Sheriff Dave Brown with Skamania County joins us now by telephone. Sheriff, thanks for taking a few minutes to update us. What do you know about this missing person, first of all? Uh, well, I know that uh, he's part of a climbing group that was being an uh, receiving some instruction uh, yesterday afternoon and had left the group, uh, went ahead of the group to go down and start taking the camp down so they could leave the area. Uh, when the rest of the group showed up, he was not there and all of the camping equipment was still present. So that's what really started uh, the effort to look for him. What agencies right now, Sheriff, are taking part in this search effort? Uh, the Volcano Rescue Team out of Yakult, and then the Crag Rats out of Hood River. Portland Mountain Rescue is assisting. Uh, the Army uh, has sent a helicopter from Yakima to assist in the search effort as well. There's about 35 searchers on the mountain right now uh, checking above and below Timberline, and then the uh, helicopter is also assisting from the air. Based on the fact that he was with a group, have they been able to pinpoint a location that you're really zeroing in on? Um, not really, and it's, it's a little bit different right now because the winter climbing route is the main route up the mountain, so they're coming off the Marble Mountain Snow Park, which you have to uh, across the worm flow and then make your way to the normal Monitor Ridge route. So it's a little bit more delayed in getting over to the normal climbing route. And uh, they're trying to focus on where the group thought they last saw him and then work from there. Uh, fortunately, the, you know, the weather's conducive right now to, to trying to work the area. It's not as windy up on the mountain as it is here in the gorge today. So that's helping a little bit. And uh, there are quite a few folks out there. So I think that's obviously a benefit. Yes, yeah, Sheriff, you mentioning uh, the clear weather. We're looking now at a picture of Sky 8 headed toward the Mount St. Helens area. And uh, can you talk about any other challenges that crews might be facing? Well, I think the, the biggest one is, is just we have just about everything that we can put at it right now as far as ground personnel. So it's 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 timing and trying to find him as quickly as possible before the weather comes in this afternoon and uh, changes, which it's, I think, predicted to do. So it's, it's really just kind of trying to push as hard as we can uh, in these few daylight hours that are left to try and locate. Yes, Sheriff, thank you so much for joining us. And time is of the essence, as we know, so we'll let you get back to uh, leading in this search effort. And we'll keep you updated here on KGW in the efforts to find this missing man on Mount St. Helens. Let's bring in Rod Hill. And Rod, uh, you can tell us more about the conditions on the mountain that the rescuers are dealing with. We did mention the clear weather, not as windy, he said as well. Yeah, you know, the east wind impacts Mount Hood. It is not that east gorge wind typically does not hit Mount St. Helens and all of the weather sensors that we can get eyes on show it's a fairly calm day up there. We saw the pictures from Sky 8, good visit. This is the camera on the north side of the mountain up at Johnson Ridge Observatory looking back to the south. And we, we think the gentleman missing, of course, is on the back side of this image. But again, the clouds are way high above the volcano, so visibility is good. Winds are light. Temperatures are cold. Anywhere from 5,000 to 6,500 feet in elevation up there. It's likely right around uh, 26, 27, 28 degrees right now. I don't think it got any colder than about 21 or 22 last night. As far as the incoming weather, I do believe the searchers will have good conditions all the way through the daylight hours. Sunset right now, I think, is at 427 this afternoon. Uh, Mount St. Helens from about 9 o'clock this evening into the night, though, we'll start to see the visibility fall apart as moisture hits the mountain. And, Kathy, it could be a mix of sleet and freezing rain and snow up through about 5,000 feet. Above that, it will be all snow tonight, but probably looking at three or four inches at most. So let's hope we have good news this afternoon because I think the weather will hold. Absolutely, Rod. Thank you. We'll see you in a bit for the weekend forecast. New here at noon, the family of a woman who died in the Washington County Jail will get $10 million in a settlement. The deal was announced just a few hours ago. KGW's Maggie Vespa just talked with the family and their attorney. And Maggie, this case goes back to 2014. 
Kathy, it does. She died in April of that year of we now know dehydration from heroin withdrawal. It took her parents, Madeline Pitkin's parents, more than a year to actually learn that and actually much longer than that to learn the details of the oversights and the screw ups, quite frankly, that led to their daughter's death. And I want to show you video now shot in the last couple of hours here downtown. You can see four and a half years later, we now have the resolution to the lawsuit that brought that to light. There's Russell and Mary Pitkin in the middle. Their attorneys on the left and right today. They announced a settlement again in the suit against Washington County and the company then contracted to provide health care for inmates at the jail. That company's name, Horizon Health Incorporated. I apologize, we're going to have an ambulance going by here. It's getting even closer. The settlement, once again, $10 million. Why? In short, attorneys say the doctors and nurses at the jail failed to notice or failed to react to obvious signs that Madeline was in trouble. They never gave her an IV, even as she vomited green bile, soiled her clothes, and begged in writing for help multiple times. The lead physician, they say, was even fired less than 24 hours before Madeline's death for, the attorneys say, falsifying records. But no one was prosecuted. Today, Madeline's dad read a statement. There are too many of these kinds of deaths. We hope and pray that Madeline's death, and she didn't die in vain, and that her story may have helped others in the same situation to turn their lives around. Madeline was a daughter, a sister, a sister-in-law, an aunt, a niece, a cousin and a friend. Now, Corizon, just in the last 10 minutes, sent us a statement saying the lessons they learned in Madeline's case have been, quote, catalysts for significant changes. By the way, their contract with Washington County has since ended. And a similar statement about major changes made in their system from Washington County today. A sheriff spokesman just in the last hour or so called this a tragedy and again say they've made huge shifts in how they handle inmate care. They also noted that Corizon Health Incorporated is paying 100% of that $10 million in damages. Back to you. Maggie, thank you. A wrestling coach at a high school in Bend is in custody, accused of sending sexually explicit photos to a student. 24-year-old Eric Nazario Aguirre, right here, is a volunteer coach at Bend Senior High School. Between August and November, police say he used a fake social media account to reach out to the student. He's charged with luring a minor for sexual contact and online sexual corruption of a child. He's expected to be arraigned next week. The president announced two nominations to top-level positions this morning. President Trump says he'll nominate William Barr, the attorney general under President George H.W. Bush, as his next attorney general. Barr will replace Jeff Sessions, who resigned last month. Here's what the president had to say earlier. And he was my first choice from day one, respected by Republicans and respected by Democrats. He will be nominated for the United States Attorney General, and hopefully that process will go very quickly. The president also said he'll nominate State Department spokeswoman Heather Nauer to be the next U.S. ambassador to the United Nations. She'll replace Nikki Haley at the end of the year. The plans to add tolls to two of Portland's major freeways took another step forward. Oregon's Transportation Commission is approving the plan. It now heads to federal agencies for their approval. Under the plan, tolls will be added to I-5 from Multnomah Boulevard to Going Street and I-205 near the Abernathy Bridge. ODOT says the tolls are still five to ten years away from becoming a reality. We are just about 29 hours away from the soccer showdown in Atlanta. The Portland Timbers will try to win their second MLS Cup, and a whole plane load of supporters flew out there this morning to be on hand. KGW's Tim Gordon joins us live from PDX, where you, Tim, got to take part in all the excitement. That's right, Kathy. You know, we know people are taking other flights to get there, too. But we had a lot of fun going into the airport and seeing this group come together for a special charter flight early this morning. 
Ah, but there was a lot going on before anyone boarded the flight. Alaska Airlines and the Timbers pulled out all the stops with food and festivities. Hey, how you doing? Even the captain of the flight, of course, a big fan, enjoyed the pre-flight fun. And the Thorns star goalie Adriana French is along to do some reporting for the team. What are you looking forward to uh, on this flight and this weekend? Being embedded in the fans and being a fan rather than a player on the field, it's going to be a different experience and exciting. The flight had some frequent flyers like Ray. I'm Ray. Great to meet you. Ray, nice to meet you. You're heading to Atlanta. I'm heading to Atlanta. You, you have no croissant on your face. You're they're, fine. They're feeding me. They're taking care of me. This is going to be an amazing trip. Can't wait to see the Timbers win. Enthusiastic and hopeful for a win. Some want a trip. We are in the stadium. We actually want a sweepstakes, so we're going on the flight for free and the tickets for free. Awesome. So, What's your name? Catherine. Give, give us a good Go Timbers. Go Timbers! Yeah, Catherine's got it on. And then there is the guy who got the whole victory log thing going years ago and passed it on to Timber Joey. Timber Jim at the gate and ready to see if the team can bring home the cup again. I'm just excited to go see it. I'm just going as a fan, you know. And uh, we've got the log out there already. Joy took care of that. So the tradition continues. Yes, it does. Timber Jim says the atmosphere in Atlanta is amazing. Of course, he's been there before. But he says with a vast majority of seats going for Atlanta fans, well, it makes it tough. But, you know, the Timbers have been road warriors. They've been great underdogs on the road. So, Kathy, let's get it done in Atlanta. Absolutely. Go Timbers! <laughs> All you. right, thank you. Sounds like some of the fans were already losing their voices. And nice to know the log has made it. Well, Orlando Sanchez has also made it to Atlanta right now. This morning, he got a sneak peek inside the Mercedes-Benz Stadium where the match will be taking place. The stadium holds up to 83,000 people. Check it out. That's compared to the 22,000 seats at Providence Park. Orlando will have live updates on the MLS Cup starting today at 4 o'clock. So stay with us on KGW for the latest on the championship match. Still to come here, backing out of the Oscars, Kevin Hart stepping away from hosting duties amid controversy about offensive comments he made in the past. Hear how people are reacting. And a reminder, the KGW Toy Drive continues this morning. PetSmart stopped by the station to make their generous donation. Look at that. You can drop off a new unwrapped toy at our collection event this Saturday at the Lloyd Center. It's from 11 to 3. From noon to 2, Rod Hill will be there along with Nina Melhoff and Dan Haggerty. If you can't make it to the event, you can always donate a toy at any Regents, any Wells Fargo, or your local Toyota dealership. For a complete list of the collection sites, you can visit kgw.com slash toy.